Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a system of equations using substitution. And in this case, we're going to have two solutions that are going to be infinite many solutions or no solutions. And a lot of times, this gets students confused. They make It makes sense graphically. You can see that you know when it has infinite many, it's the, exactly the same line or equation. Um, and when there's no solution, uh, you can see that they are they have the two lines have exactly the same slope, or they are parallel lines when you graph them. However, when you start solving system of equations algebraically, a lot of we come into um, an equation that sometimes doesn't really make as much sense. So we have to go ahead and kind of think about it. So um, basically, we're solving a system of equations using substitution. So we're going to use our same steps. Um, one of the first things I want you to do for your steps is to identify the variable that you're going to solve for. Now, the two the equations I you know identified. Remember, when you're determining substitution, is you're choosing a variable that has a coefficient of one or negative one. So you can see in this case, um, I have x, y, x, y. Well, this y is the only one that has a coefficient of 1. So therefore, that is going to be the variable that I'm going to solve for. You could obviously solve for any one of the other variables if you wanted to. However, we ch I circle this one because that's going to be the easiest. When it has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, that's the easiest one to solve for. Because all i got to do to solve for y is just get rid of that 3x. So I add a 3x to both sides, and I'm left with y equals 3x, and that's a positive 7. OK? Now what we do is we take our values. Since now all I've done is I've taken the second equation. I just rewrote it, so y is equal to it. Now I'm going to set that equal. I'm going to plug that into the other equation. So in doing that, I now have 6x minus 2. And instead of times y, I'm going to replace y with 3x plus 7, because that's the value of y from the other equation, equals 7. Now, I apply distributive property. You can see here I have a multi-step equation. So I'm going to have to simplify the side. So I'll apply distributive property. And when doing that, I get 6x minus 6x minus 14 equals 7. Well, now I simplify down. Well, 6x minus 6x is just 0x. So therefore, I have negative 14 equals 7. Well, negative 14 equals 7 is never going, negative 14 is never going to equal 7. So therefore, that is incorrect. It's, um, it is not true. So therefore, when you are solving using sys, um, substitution, and you come into, when, once you plug it in, you're using all the same steps. But rather than solving for x here, I got rid of my x's, and I, and I came up with a statement that is not true. So therefore, these, um, this would be no solutions. No matter what value you plug in for x, these two lines are never going to be. And you could verify this by setting them. Set, um, rewriting them in slope-intercept form. If I was to write that in slope-intercept form, the slope would still be um, 3x. So they're parallel lines. So we'll just write no solution. Okay. So hopefully you understand that you listened to me before. I said that we're going to do one with no solution and one with infinite many solutions. So we know this one's going to have infinite many solutions, but how is that going to look? So again, I'm going to identify my variable that has a coefficient of 1, which is this x. So now I'm going to solve for that x by adding a 2y to both sides. So therefore, I'm left with now x equals 2y minus 5. So now, in this one, I solve for y, and I found out what y equals. Now I'm solving for x. So you can solve for x or y. It doesn't matter. You just want to solve for the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So now I know what x is. Now I'm going to plug in the value of x into my other equation. So I have 6y minus 3, not only times x, but times what the value of x is, which we determined in here, which is 2y minus 5. And that's equal to 15. Now again, I apply distributive property to simplify. And I get 6y minus 6y um, plus 15 equals 15. Well, again, the 6y's are going to add to 0 or subtract to 0. And therefore, I'm left with. 15 is equal to 15. So now we have an equation that is true, right? We have 15 equals to 15. So that means no matter what value I plug in for x, I'm always going to have a statement that's going to be true. So therefore, this is what we call infinite many solutions. And you can verify this again. If you were to solve both these equations, put them in slope-intercept form, you would notice they're exactly the same equations, exactly the same slope, exactly the same y-intercept where these would have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations using substitution when you have infinite many solutions and no solutions. Thanks.